join with me now as we center into that heart space for our opening prayer. Mother, Father, God, creator of all life, divine nature, creator of all good. We come together today in celebration of your divine love, in celebration of the peace and the tranquility that moves through us at this moment, in that peace and tranquility that we move out through us into each new moment as we come together in divine connection. For where we stand, safe within the four walls of our shelter in space and our shelter in place, we know that we permeate outside by turning on the light inside. So from where we stand in this position in the divine universe, we are connected to all points of interest in the infinite universe. And as we breathe in and we breathe out, we recognize this, that this is a miracle, a celebration of new life as it moves through us, healing us and revealing to us all things are possible in the now moment. And for this sweet spirit, we are ever so grateful for as you are love, we discover that which we are. Your love in action. So in my heart right now, sweet spirit, I say on behalf of all of those from unity, spiritual, center, across the country, what we say to our children as we bring our service into full swing each and every Sunday. Extending that children's blessing to the children of this new world. And as we place our hands on our heart and lift them up into that abundance that is you, we say, children, we love you. We bless you and we appreciate you just the way you are and we behold the Christ in you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sweet spirit, for creating this thought in consciousness with us this morning as we move forward to allow more of you through to our infinite legacy of life. Amen. Good morning. My name is Tim West. I'm one of your prayer chaplains here at Unity in the Olympics in Port Angeles, Washington, in the beautiful, beautiful Olympic Mountains. On behalf of Unity in the Olympics, I welcome you to our Sunday celebration service. At this moment, our building is closed to gatherings, but our hearts and minds are ever so open to share our love and light with you all around the world. We welcome you, no matter where you are. And we thank you for joining us in our virtual service here on Facebook and on YouTube. So as we do each and every Sunday, we start with our Declaration of Faith, our fundamental principles at Unity in the Olympics. If you would, join with me. There is only one power and one presence in this universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. Say that as you feel that with me this morning. Ready to do that again? There is only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. 
One of my favorite things to do each and every Sunday is to get up in the morning and read the daily word. But not only do I read it on Sundays, I read it to start every day of the week as I go into meditation. The Daily Word is a bi-monthly publication of Unity Wide World Ministries, and it coincides with our Silent Unity Ministry. It's located its main offices out of Unity Village, Missouri, but Unity is international. With subscribers around the world, the Daily Word contains heart-centered articles, mm -hmm. daily thoughts and affirmations that that comfort and guide us throughout our experiences along our way. Today's daily word is one of my favorite daily words, and it's very symbolic of my position right here today in this now moment. Because of all those people I feel connected with, I feel that connection through love. So today's daily word is love. And the affirmation that goes along with it is, if you read along with me, is... I am a loving presence to everyone I meet. Now that starts out with the I am. That talks about me. So let's say this together as a we, because the better part of me is you, shall we? We are a loving presence to everyone we meet. It has been said that the world needs more love. The truth is that all the love the world can ever need is already present everywhere because God is love and God is present everywhere. Created in God's image, we are divine love in the human expression. We know that love is much more than just a positive feeling. Divine love is the energy of oneness itself. As we remain centered in divine love, we know oneness in God with all people places, things, and life itself, including those who are dear to me and those I have never met. Divine love helps me see good everywhere and in everyone. I look beyond conflict and limitation and find the good that is always mine to discover. That daily word message about love actually started as a thought in 1 John 4, 7, where it says, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. There is a silence within us into which the world cannot intrude. There is an ancient peace we carry in our hearts. There is a sense of holiness we cannot lose. We are one with God, who is our source. This is the time, this is the place, this is the moment we embrace. is our energy, and there is no beginning in 
there is no end, for God and I are one. Bless the world. Our guest speaker today is Reverend William Evans. Now around here, we call him Bill. His lesson for today, May 31st, 2020, is happy birthday. And I said, Bill, what do you mean by a happy birthday? And he said, well, this is a really great time to evaluate and analyze and examine the relevance of this holy day for us today in correlation to that of the past. So what really did happen 50 days after Easter and what does it mean to us today? We're gonna to hand it over to our friend, Reverend Bill, with the message, happy birthday. Reverend Bill, are you ready? Take it away, Bill. Good morning. Don't you just love birthdays? I mean, it, as long as you don't think about the number that represents your age, it, birthdays can really be fun. I mean, it's your very own day, and it that makes it special for you. You know, when you think of birthdays, I guess you think of parties and cakes and little candles on top of the cakes that will uh, uh, help to... Uh, bring about the festivities or whatever. And if you try to blow out all the candles, well, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. You don't always get them all. So uh, you got to have a little help sometimes. But uh, if I told you happy birthday today, would you know what I was talking about? In my tradition, Today, being Pentecost, is often called the birthday of the church. It remembers an event that happened 50 days after the first Easter. And that event was the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the followers of Jesus. To get an idea about what happened, let's uh, look at the scriptures a little bit. Here is the first uh, four verses of uh, the second chapter of Acts. You can look at it. And then uh, we're going to look, first of all, though, at uh, uh, verse 1 in there. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Well, who is this they that came together in that one place? Normally, we think of it as the apostles, the disciples, or something like that. But it really was a lot more. It was more people than that. It was the whole grouping of those who had followed Jesus. Because in the preceding 50 days, Jesus had appeared to them. He appeared to many of them. And he had taught them many things. And so they were living within the miracle of the resurrection. Now, most of these people that were together in that room or that same area, they were from the same geographical region. They were from Galilee. And they probably had known each other for many years. And Jesus himself had made his home there in Galilee he had gone to the city of Capernaum 
and made a home there on the north shore of Lake Gennesaret, which we know of as the Sea of Galilee. In fact, most of the disciples were from that area. Uh, of the original 12, probably 11 were from Galilee. The only one who was not from Galilee was Judas. He was an outsider, and he came from Judea. Now, this group of people that met and were together on that day, they may have gathered to share their growing understanding and belief in what they had experienced. After all, someone who died had appeared to them and had taught them, and so they were together in that experience. And they were probably in prayer at the time. I've been in a large room with a large group of people praying, all everybody praying, and you know, there was a lot of murmuring, and the murmuring would go up in volume and down in volume and up in volume and down in volume. And it was very melodious and very beautiful too. Now, let's look at the uh, second verse. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, what happened in that time was that energy, the Holy Spirit, which was energy, it was moving. And when energy moves, either quickly or even slowly, it can produce a sound. The sound can be audible even to the human ear. You've heard of me talk of my first attempt at, at uh, meditation, where I went down in the basement at night, two o'clock in the morning, and tried to meditate. My wife came down and asked me what that noise was. She said it sounded like I'd put rocks in a can and I was just slowly spinning it around and around and around. I said, I didn't hear anything, but uh, she did. And in fact, we had a house guest at that time. And the noise, which she described in the same way, woke her up. So it was my attempt to meditate and grinding my gears. I was making some noise and until it kept on getting faster and faster, Kathy said, until finally it just you know, went away. But the energy of the Holy Spirit was naturally very strong. And the sound that it made as it moved was like a strong wind. Now, there probably was not a movement of air, but the sound was there. So, in addition to the sound, there was a visual effect, too. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest upon each of them. Now, I need to explain a little bit of what's going on here. In our illusion of separateness, and that's what it all is, it is an illusion. It is necessary that we believe that there is a distance between everything. Social distancing at, at, its, at its worst or our best, I guess. Everything in our experience has to abide by this understanding of separation or else the illusion of separateness is lost. And we have that illusion of separateness for a reason to teach us a certain series of lessons. We also know that in our illusion, in our reality, that living beings cannot be separated into many pieces and still be alive. We become separate, but we have parts that grow within us as giving birth or we 
lay an, or an animal will lay an egg or something like that and give birth. But it still has separateness. The illusion of separateness has to be kept. Spirit, on the other hand, does not need to abide by that illusion. It knows that all of creation is actually a holographic uh, creation. And that you can separate it into an infinite number of pieces, but each piece will still have the characteristics of the original. The image of the tongues of fire that is spoken about in the scriptures get across the idea that even by separating into many parts, the Holy Spirit still maintains its integrity within each part. Many tongues of fire, but only one fire. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was seen as being just one spirit that did not divide into many pieces. It had to leave the person that it was in and go to another person. But it went just one person at a time. Like when the Spirit, the Holy Spirit left Elijah as he entered up into heaven in a cloud of uh, a chariot of fire. And then his mantle or the Spirit entered into Elijah. It's also like the concept of the Spirit of the Dalai Lama that leaves his body at death and then enters into another body to be reincarnated.